Do you know what I've found? People that are first learning to trade, when they're brand new to trading, those people absolutely love a trade entry point. They think that the, a good trade is made up of a good entry point and the rest of the trade is just like meh, it doesn't matter that much. Like you'll get these situations when they first start opening trades for the first time, whether it's a demo account or a live account, and they'll maybe go long Euro US dollar. And after 15 minutes, the price fluctuates around a bit, goes against them, they get nervous, exit the trade, ooh, take a loss. And then a few hours later, the price fluctuates around a bit more, builds up, and then starts moving bullishly in the direction that they thought it was going to originally. And they'll look at that and say, oh, that was a good trade, I just exited too soon. And this happens then when they look at charts as well. And I saw it a lot when Bitcoin was on the rise. People would look at a chart and see these huge movements and say, if I just knew to enter at that point there, I would be a millionaire by now. And so their quest is to find the, the right strategy to find the perfect entry point. Now, of course, when people stay on their journey, learning to trade a few months later, a few trades later, they start getting really frustrated. And the frustration is not necessarily about the trade entry point, but what you find a lot of the time is that the frustration comes from finding the right time to exit the trade. Now, this is where I come into things, and I didn't mean for that to sound so smug, but basically, over the course of this video and some other videos related to this one, I want to talk to you about how to build a good exit strategy. And I'm not just going to teach you this based around the Dwomer method. I'm going to show you how I approach my exit strategy based around the Dwomer method, so that those of you who are learning with us can learn the right way to exit your trades. But what I want to do is to talk you through the logic of why I'm doing it this way, so that whether you're using our strategy, our method, or a different one altogether, you can still use some of the principles to form a strategy that's gonna work for you. Because the thing is, everyone obviously has some sort of strategy for finding an entry for a trade, or at least they should have a strategy. But you find very few people actually having a strategy for the exit that is tied back to that overall strategy, that overall theory of what the markets are doing. So when you have a strategy for an entry, you have a theory of why the price is going to do what you think it's going to do at that point in time. So your exit strategy should be the same thing. It shouldn't just be along the lines of, I'm going to enter now and I'm going to take a, some profit in 50 pips time or I'm targeting 100 pips just for the sake of it. It needs to be that actually your exit strategy is linked to the overall logic behind the system. So it's all about logic and I want to talk you through my logic. But it's like anything in trading, it's not like so black and white that I can talk you through and say, do this, 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 and then you're all good. It's a gray area as always, and it's a little bit complex. So we're gonna break it down. And what I want to talk about in this video is something that I get asked about a lot, which is when to move your stop loss to either break even or into a bit more profit. Because what you find is a lot of people will either move their stop loss too soon and it gets triggered and it would have been a good trade and they're like, shit, I end up at break even when I could have made all this profit. Or on the other hand, of course, you have people that had a really profitable trade and somehow they let it drift so much they end up becoming a loss that they shouldn't have taken as a loss. At the very least, it should have been break even. So in this video, I'm going to teach you a very basic rule that you can follow that ties into everything else that we teach. And when I say basic, it's because essentially this is like the foundations of it and everything else else, all the complexities build on top of this. There's just some other grey areas, some context specific things that I might do in other situations. But it's always a good way to learn to have something basic that you can follow, because that way you can start tracking the progress, you can start actually taking note of what happened in different situations, and because there's a consistent rule across all of the different trades you're taking, you can start to see different situations when you would have slightly changed it, when you would have been more tolerant on certain aspects of it. So unfortunately I don't have my drawing tool, but I have prepared a little template here on PowerPoint don't laugh, I actually think it looks quite good. And I wanna talk you through just four scenarios that are going to essentially explain everything that you need to know to follow this very basic rule for moving your stop loss based around the structure of the markets. Because you know with the Dwemer method, everything we do is based around the structure of the markets, the wave patterns and so on. Like everything sort of forms around there, all of our analysis. So let's look at this chart. We're in a bullish trend and we're gonna enter long. Now, when we say about a bullish trend, if we're looking at the structure of the markets, we have a very basic rule we can follow for that, which is looking at the highs and the lows. So for example here, we can look at the waves, the peaks and the troughs of this sort of wave pattern moving up, and we can see that this is the first high over here, and this is the first low. Then the next high is obviously higher than that one, so we'd say that's a higher high, and this low is higher than that previous low, so it's a higher low. So if you're getting higher highs and higher lows, you're in uptrend. If that starts to break down, it's possible that the trend's breaking down. And so when we're looking at the structure of the market, that's what we consider. 
So let's imagine that we've got to this point, we've had the higher highs, higher lows, and we enter here. We've entered at the last higher low before the price got up here. So at the point of entry, we've put our stop loss down here. Let's just say that's an arbitrary place to put a stop loss or it's based on something else on the chart, whatever. We'll, we'll talk about proper stop losses and that part of the exit strategy at another point in time. But you can see that the price since our entry has pushed up and created a higher high. And at this point in time, we've now got our double confirmation. And let's say that it's a very strong one. So we've got our baseline trend line and some sort of horizontal significant level. And we expect the price from there is going to go bearish. So it's going to drop from there. So based on this, what we'd expect to happen is that if the trend's going to continue, it's going to create a higher low and then push up and create a higher high. So you don't want to be exiting the trade just because it's fluctuating down here necessarily. Because what might happen is the price might stop here and then fluctuate up higher. It might go all the way down here and go up higher. It might go down to here in line with where it was before and go up higher. And you don't want to be exiting then because, or like exiting where it is now, because you might miss out on that extra profit. So you might end up exiting at this point and it might only go down to here before going up again. So instead we want to stay in the trade at this point. Now what happens if it breaks down here and creates a lower low? So we've had a higher high, but at this point we've got a lower low. Well, based on the Dwoma method, what we always think of with this is that when the structure is having like the opposite, so it's having a higher high and a lower low, or the opposite is having a higher low and a lower high, we think that's weakness in the structure. The, strength, the, the trend, not the strength, the trend can still continue afterwards, but there's weakness. That means uncertainty is increased and you need to start to put that, like have that little bit of doubt in your thinking and consider that uncertainty is sort of seeping into the trading environment for you. But since we're with the trend, we can accept that bit of uncertainty. When we come on to going against the trend, we'll see that it's very different. But at this point, if it's gone down here, we're still fine. So we're gonna keep the stop loss here. If it goes below this stop loss here, like we've had it before, it's probably gone too much lower that it's probably unlikely to come all the way back up here and create a higher high. At this point in time, it's probably more likely it's going to create a higher low and then go down again. In which case, at this point here, all we've got to, to anticipate, all we've got to look forward to is sort of a continuation of this trend downwards. And if it does return from here and go all the way up here again afterwards, like if it's gone down there and comes back up, then there's a lot of sort of volatile movements in the market and we probably don't want to be in the trade anyway. So essentially, if you have entered your trade at the last wave, the wave bottom, and you're with the trend and you, you find your significant levels there, stay in the trade, keep your stop loss where it is. Obviously, if you think that these significant levels are strong enough that it's going to see the end of the trend and you know that already and you want to get out, that's a completely different story. Like I said, I'm telling you basic rules with four scenarios just to create that foundation level before we build on it with other parts of an exit strategy. So let's move on to the next one. Let's say that again, you're in this sort of bullish trend, you're in this uptrend, you've entered in the same place, but this time when you find your trend line and your significant level and you know the price is going to drop or you expect it to, it's after it hasn't found a new high. So essentially if it reverses from here, it's going to be a lower high. So in that case, we want to move our stop loss up to break even because if it breaks through here, we're now going to have a lower high and a lower low that's been created. That means that from just the structure alone, it's changing to a bearish structure and maybe a bearish trend. And so even though eventually, obviously it might tie into like the wave structure of a larger wave and move bullish again, at this point in time, we can expect that there's going to be some bearish fluctuations and maybe we want to be out of the trade at break even. However, with the Dwoma method, we have two sort of failures that we look for. There's the type one failure where it will just be the wick coming on here and then moving up. And we have the type two failure where the price would actually go through and then the candle body would close on there. And both of those are failure, which would mean that it didn't actually create a lower low. Like if you got to like this level where the stop loss is, that's in line with the low that was there before. If you had a type two close there, technically it hasn't created a lower low and therefore you're still in the bullish trend and you can still continue upwards. However, if you've got your stop loss here, and you have a type two close, then the price has to fluctuate through that stop loss in order to close as a type two, which means that you would be out of the trade, your stop loss would be triggered before the price starts continuing afterwards. And by the way, if you're not familiar with what a type one, type two, and also type three setups are, and you want to know more about that for our method of trading, the link's in the description box. I'm not gonna explain it too much here because it's explained elsewhere. Just go and check it out, it's a free video, it's on YouTube. 
and then you'll be more familiar with what I'm talking about here. So essentially, we need to have two types of stop loss in this sort of situation. We need to have what we call a soft stop loss and a hard stop loss. So your soft stop loss is manual. This is based on the candle breaking through that stop loss on a closing basis. In other words, the price comes down here and it closes through the stop loss. You manually close the trade. The reason for that is because obviously if it hasn't closed yet, it might come back up and close the type two and we're still good to go. So in that case, you wouldn't close the trade at the end of the candle. However, we don't want to just have a sort of naked trade with no stop loss protecting us. So at this point in time, you still want to have a hard stop loss and the hard stop loss is a normal stop loss that's going to get triggered automatically if the price touches it. Now, I'd recommend always putting your hard stop loss at a point on the chart where you think if it gets down to there, there's a very slim chance of it even returning back for a type two. So if it gets to that point, you'd rather be out of the trade and lose the uncertainty. So let's say, for example, down here. If it gets down here, you don't expect that the price during that candle is going to come back up to be a type two, so you'd rather be out of the trade. So you have your soft stop loss there and you have your hard stop loss further down. And that's what you're doing if you're going with the trend and if it creates a lower high or the opposite, obviously, for a bearish situation. So let's move on to if you're going against the trend. So again, let's have a look at that entering on that last wave. So let's say that we've entered here and we've gone in profit and we've hit this trend line and horizontal significant level and we expect the price is going to move up. And at that same point in time, you can see that we haven't created a lower low. So it's still with the trend. This is going to be, if it goes up here, it's going to be a higher low. And since we're with the trend, what do we expect is going to happen? It's most likely going to push up and create a higher high. So if it's creating a higher low there, the chance are it's also going to create a higher high. Of course it might not, but we don't want that uncertainty. So at this point in time, if it's hitting those significant levels, unless you have reason to think otherwise, like based on other sort of factors that we are not considering in this example, like if there's a very strong fundamental situation or your entry was particularly strong, you might stay in it. But otherwise, if this is a situation with all else being equal, at this point here, I am exiting the trade. I'm gonna take the profit and run because you don't want to risk you know, ending up with nothing. So your stop loss isn't just move down to break even because the chance side is going to hit that. Instead, you're going to get out of the trade. However, if you're in a situation now where it's been the bullish trend. You've got your entry point there that's created a higher high. You've got your entry and now it's created a lower low. So it's actually gone below that previous low. Now, in this situation, if it's going to be reversing upwards, we know that if it creates a higher high again, then the trend's continuing bullish. You can expect that it's going to be a higher low and a higher high and so on. But if it doesn't get to that point, if it fails before, then you're actually then potentially in a a bearish trend that is going to create a lower high and the price is going to move downwards. So of course you want to take the risk at this point because you might be at the very start of a bearish trend down of course. So in this situation what you would do is move your stop loss to break even. Now again it's the same principle as what we just spoke about. You can have a soft stop loss here because of course it could do a type 2 close and it will be fine and you're going to have your hard stop loss a little bit further up. Now in terms of going against the trend, it's sometimes difficult to pick where you put your hard stop loss because when you're going with the trends, of course you can put it on the previous waves. So in this case, I would base my hard stop loss on some other major significant levels. So for example, if there's a major sort of baseline trend line there, if there's a 161 based on like these waves that these are creating an ABC and you get the 161.8 up there or something like that, that's where I'm gonna put my stop loss because we know the price the significant levels attract the price as well as repelling it. So we know it's going to be potentially pulling the price up there. But once it gets there, maybe it repels it back down and you're going to end up with a type two close. So just to reiterate, in this situation, if we've entered against the trend, but it's moved so much in our favor that we've created a lower low or the reverse, obviously, if we're in a bearish situation, then I'm going to move my stop loss to break even. Soft stop loss and hard stop loss above. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail about the structure because we've said that in other videos, but when it comes to looking at the markets in this way and looking at the wave patterns, you have to make sure that the waves you're looking at are for the time horizon of the trade. 
Like you don't want to be entering based on sort of the macro waves, the longer term waves, and then exiting your trade based on a fluctuation on a shorter term wave. You want to make sure that it's tying in together. And that has to time with the time frame you're using. There is a video that I did about this and I'm going to leave the link for that in the description box below. You'll see it below the video about the type one and type two closes. So of course we're talking about the last wave that's on there. What happens if your entry was here and you're going long? So let's first of all go back to this one, right? This is the first example that we gave. If your entry was down here, You've already got some profit at this point. You've created a, a higher low. It's moving up another higher high again. Your entry's here. So what do you do at this point in time? Well, you could probably stay in the trade, of course, because even if it goes below this point, it can still end up going up higher. But what I would do is to move my stop loss to break even now because we've moved along a little bit and there's no need for it to come all the way back down to here and end up with a losing position. Alternatively here, what am I going to do? It's created a lower high, so I'm going to move my stop loss up to here because if it breaks through that, it doesn't matter that my entry was here, it's still potentially going to be a bearish trend forming with a lower high and then a lower low. And then obviously when we look at the opposite, we don't need to go through these ones because if another sort of wave has been created, the situation is then becoming the same as these ones. So essentially, like let's say that you entered along here, your stop loss as you're going along can start to move up and move up and move up as a soft stop loss and a hard stop loss because you don't yet have any reason to exit if it's just fluctuating around. And it's better to stay in the trade because you don't know at what point that wave's going to end. Now, as I said, there are more factors at play when we're looking at our exit strategy and we need to take into account the significant levels, the price action, other things, fundamentals, news releases. So this isn't just the only rule that we use for moving the stop losses and so on, but it's a nice base foundation for you to be following so you've got a rule and make sure that you take notes in your trade journal so you can actually sort of figure out at what points this was working really well, at what points I would have changed it, when should I have stayed in longer, when did the rule fail me? And then you can start to build on top of that and add the more complex rules and so on. So obviously, since we base everything around the structures and the waves with the Duomo method, this works well for us. But I hope that you, if you're doing a different strategy, a different system, will take the same principles of this and find a way that you can tie into your approach for trading and not be so strict on things. Like there's too many people that are saying, when the RSI gets to this, I'm exiting my trade or things like that. And it's not necessary to do that. You're just going to end up leaving a lot of profit on the table or worse, taking losses when you shouldn't have been doing that. So try and find a rule that ties into the overall theory behind the system, the overall model that you're building things on. And by doing that, you can end up riding a trend like this where you end up like staying in as the waves start to build all the way up and have no reason to exit until you get to a point where maybe it's going to either trigger your stop loss or not. And if it doesn't, you can still carry on. But if not, you're keeping safe at all times while riding the waves of a trend. And that's not a bad way of trading. But anyway, like I said, there's going to be more to come. In tomorrow's video, I want to build on what we've spoken about here and start to talk about the difference between your trade move potential, your TMP that we talk about a lot, and the actual place where you're going to exit your trade. They're not the same thing. I want to drag you out of this target mindset where you exit because it's hit your target and drag you into this context-based exit strategy. So if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you've got any questions, which I'm sure you will because this has just been a live run through, then please leave them below. I'll try and answer as many as possible. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so so you don't miss out on any of our other videos. I'm getting really hot with these lights on me, so I'm gonna go. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.